Epilogue. This time, the Marky Room didn't seem nearly so terrifying. The needle that Master Sulira was holding up and examining still looked a bit like, well, alarming, seemed like a strong word, but it did make him feel just a little uneasy. Kalen tried to tell himself how ridiculous that was, considering what he'd been through. Then he just tried to think about something else. The journey had been long, but uneventful, and arriving at the Magistratum had been strange. Physically, it was the same enormous square block of a structure he remembered, but in other ways, spiritually, he supposed, he could feel how deeply it had been broken. Mages still traveled in groups in the hallways, as Helena had described. They looked at one another with suspicion. Even though the danger was past and Mage Krellig was dead, the mistrust that had grown among them was still there. The traitor mages were all under lock and constant guard, of course, but Sarek pointed out that they would never know what other mages might have been considering joining Krellig and only lacked the nerve or opportunity to do so. Those who had joined Sarek shared a bond of trust now, both from having declared their opposition to Krellig and from the experience of surrendering their power to Kalin during the battle. But all of those others who had remained undeclared, it might be a long time before any of them were fully trusted by the rest or were fully able to trust themselves. Many of the mages hailed Sarek as some kind of savior of the Magistratum, coming to put the whole system back together again, but Sarek told them all repeatedly that he was only here temporarily. And under duress, he added to the last group that approached him on their way to the marking, on the way to the marking room, Anders had chuckled. What? Sarek asked, turning on him irritably. Nothing, Anders said, holding up his hands. You just have a very large set of notes and plans for someone who is here for such a short time and completely against his will. Sarek looked down at the satchel of papers he hadn't set down once since they'd arrived. Well, if I have to be here, I might as well set things as right as possible before I leave, he said, which will be very soon, very soon, as soon as I get certain things in order and get the new council up and running and make sure Krullig's mages are going to be suitably taken care of. He trailed off as Anders and Kalen exchanged smirks and turned away. It's temporary, Sarek called after them as they walked away. Just, ugh. Not all of their encounters had been so amusing, though. Earlier that day, they'd run into Mage Brovera and Mage Metelson, two of the mages who had been ready to take drastic measures to stop what they were sure would be Kalen's betrayal of the Magistrat. Kalen was glad Mage Thomil wasn't with them. He hoped Thomil had finally decided to find himself some better friends staying around with. There had been a very awkward moment as they all stood there in the hallway, looking at one another. Mages, Sirk had said finally, I trust that you are not going to cause any additional trouble. I have quite enough problems to deal with already. I do not think I will have much patience for any more. Mage Brevera had opened his mouth rather angrily, but Mendelssohn placed a firm-looking hand on his companion's arm and said mildly, No trouble, Mage Sir. We're just pleased that everything worked out so well in the end. He started forward, not releasing his grip on Brevera's arm, and the other man was forced to move along with him. At the last second, he turned his gay head to meet Kalen's eyes and flinched, and then turned quickly back around and kept walking. Kalen, Anders said gently, stop that. It had taken Kalen a second to realize that he'd started forming a spell, the face-melting one. He hadn't actually cast it, of course, just formed it, without even knowing he was doing it. Kalen swallowed and released the magic energy he'd gathered, letting it dissipate harmlessly into the air around them. Sorry, Kalen said after a minute, I just really hate him. I know, Sark said, but you can't. I know, Kalen said, I didn't even, I wouldn't have actually... Anders put an arm around his shoulders and started them all walking again. We'll work on that. Control is always a good thing to work on. Did I ever tell you about the time I accidentally transported Council Master Greffin's pants while he was giving a speech to the entire magistratum? Ha! <laughs> Sarek had said, startling everyone with the still unfamiliar sound of his laughter. I remember that. I think he deserved it. Ah, uh, well, yes. But the point is that I did it accidentally. Pants-removing spells should only ever be cast on purpose. True, Sarek conceded. What are you going to teach me that one? Kalen asked. The next time Sarek has to give a speech, Anders whispered. Kalen had laughed hard enough to expel the last of the simmering rage that seeing Mage Brevera had inspired in him. He thought Anders might turn out to be a very good mentor. <clears throat> All right, Master Sulara said in his soft voice, bringing Kalen's attention back to the present. The needle still looked very sharp. The marker came forward and sat on the stool beside Kalen. Are you ready? Yes, Kalen said, and he thought he was. He was ready to move forward. He knew he wouldn't ever be able to truly put his experiences with Mage Krellig out of his mind, but he thought he could let go of some of the bad feelings in time. It had been terrible, and he certainly had regrets, but he couldn't regret all of it. He had done what needed to be done to save his friends and his home, and possibly the world. He wished he had been able to save Helena. She was his deepest regret of all, of course. He knew he would never forget the sound of her screaming as he fled. 
He suspected it had taken up permanent residence in the part of his brain where his nightmares lived, and he would be hearing it for the rest of his life in his dreams. But he thought she would be, have been glad to know that her sacrifice had made, or what her sacrifice had made possible. That thought was what allowed him to mourn her loss without the guilt and sorrow overwhelming him completely. <clears throat> and he made sure that Mage Avicia and everyone else knew what she had done for him and for them all. If he could go through all of that and survive and still be himself, he thought he could be ready for whatever came next, even very sharp needles. Kaelin watched as the magic energy gathered around Master Sulira's head a few seconds before he leaned forward to begin. No magic was allowed in the actual marking, but the Maker's special gift was what allowed them to see the marks that each mage should have. The mark for his new junior mage status was a standard one, but everything else would come from Kaelin's own experiences, his own skills, his own hard-won knowledge, observed and transcribed by Master Sulira's magical sight, and transformed into the lines and symbols that would be tattooed on his face or onto his face to display his progress. Kaelin felt the first stab of the needle and willed himself to remain still. It really wasn't so bad, and in truth, he could not wait to see what the marks would be. And then he couldn't wait to get back home to show Meg.